from the Nigerian army and of course the presidency, uh, which of course um, we begin to uh, put uh, some of us in some kind of position where we express a concern and worry as regards uh, why these renewed attacks are now on the increase. Uh, the Nigerian army may disagree, but of course uh, uh, the unconventional means uh, by Boko Haram sect using uh, suicide bombers, especially women, uh, to infiltrate uh, markets, uh, worship centers, uh, mosque churches, and now the recent one, which is University of Medjugorje, uh, to actually detonate these ex improvised explosive devices, and of course uh, make sure that our casualties, uh, which of course uh, start uh, with them, they are ready to die uh, in that particular course. It's now on the increase. Uh, it is now threatening the peaceful uh, atmosphere in the University of Medjugorje, as we speak, over 70 lecturers have resigned from that university. Uh, ASU, which is the academic staff union of universities, is now taking a different uh, or dangerous position, saying it might have to call out its members nationwide uh, for a nationwide strike uh, in solidarity with lecturers in the uh, University of Medjugorje. Already about seven lecturers, members of the ASU, have died due to this uh, distantly act of uh, the terrorist sect called uh, Boko Haram. Uh, but what exactly uh, uh, is the position of the Nigerian army? What are they doing to actually renew uh, their efforts to fight this to the finish? We recall that uh, the acting president, Professor Yemi Shibajo, actually ordered all the service chiefs to relocate to Medjugorje, uh, which is the command and control center of uh, the Operation La Fiadole, that is uh, the Operation uh, Command Center fighting uh, or launching onslaught uh, against uh, this uh, Boko Haram site. How will this uh, translate into a total victory? This actually uh, put a total stop uh, to these renewed attacks uh, by the Boko Haram site. We will definitely find out. Let us quickly join uh, Brigadier General Sunny Usman, uh, that is uh, uh, the Nigerian Army spokesman, we spoke with him earlier, but we've been trying to re-establish connection uh, with him. We'll take a, this, uh, this short break. Let's see if we can get him on the line. If not, we'll also try to speak uh, with uh, a representative of the lecturers, and of course a retired Colonel, Colonel Lawal, who will also be speaking with us as a security expert, and of course someone who has uh, intelligence, uh, information, and experience. Stay with us. All right, uh, you're welcome back. It's still citizens uh, from uh, on the break show, Rock City, 1.9 FM. Uh, we're still trying frantically to get uh, the spokesman of the Nigerian Army, but in the meantime, we've been able to get through to Colonel Demola Lawal, a retired colonel of the Nigerian Army, and of course, uh, he has a doctorate degree, that's a PhD in uh, public policy. He will be talking with us uh, this morning as a security expert and of course uh, as an intelligence officer. You're welcome, Colonel Awal. Thank you very much. Good morning. Yes, thank you for joining us on the show. Uh, Colonel Awal, um, of course uh, Boko Haram has been with us uh, for some time now, uh, since inception in 2000 and uh, uh, I think nine to be precise. Uh, when they started, yeah. but they've not been, uh, they were not this sophisticated when they started. Uh, but right about now, uh, the proponents of opinion is that uh, largely uh, they've been degraded. And uh, if we want to use the phrase of uh, uh, the Nigerian army and the presidency, they've been technically uh, defeated. Uh, do you agree with this uh, statement or is it an illusion? Um, halfway through, it's um, definitely the recaptured territories um, occupied by Boko Haram, uh, but the internal security within those territories is still familiar. So I think that we um, need a lot more work to do. They see what? They still need a lot of more work. They have more work to do. Why you... so what are the areas yes. they need to work on? Initially, you know, when Boko um, Haram was actually 
um, launching the, all these attacks and we're hearing more of the outskirts of Maduguri. But now, it's not just within Maduguri, but we're talking about the University of Maduguri itself being attacked from time to time. What can actually be done to ensure that that place is safe and the entirety of Maduguri as a state capital of Benue State? I, I think they need more of intelligence work. I think that uh, you need to involve more civilian um, operations in terms of the uh, assistance to the military. Uh, the military is staying on ground. Uh, it needs more effort in terms of intelligence, and it comes from the community. So they need to really get more intelligence from the communities, and therefore they need to partner with the community. Well, one would wonder uh, the essence of the collaboration uh, between the Nigerian Army and the Civilian uh, Joint Tax Force. Uh, when you talk about uh, community uh, intelligence gathering, is that why they, there is this uh, 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 Civilian uh, Joint Tax Force? No, no, not at all. Civilian Joint Tax Force is like a, a, a bridge between the Civilian Joint Tax Force and the Joint Tax Force. But when you talk about Civilian Intelligence, Community Intelligence, that um, people embedded within the community, the community themselves, not necessarily related to the task force, but identified to the task force. Uh, intelligence gathering is not about identifying specific people, but it can be covered. You know, it's a covered operation, rather than where people are known. That was the joint task force. When you start to do this, the joint task force. No, 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 not that kind of intelligence. They are researching intelligence from people that ordinarily go about their business, uh, if you see farmers, readers, if you see whatever assistance, but uh, already, you know, within the, the, the system of intelligence, to bring together some physical information they may gather. So they really need intelligence cells where civilians who are ordinarily involved in their ordinary day business can be involved. In the community, for example, there's nothing wrong with it. They look like university lecturers being uh, an informant. Uh, you know, watching students, watching what's going on, and then passing such information to relevant authorities. Uh, I think that's what is lacking. Now, uh, one uh, particular disturbing report, uh, which of course we are we, we, we are getting all the way from uh, uh, University of Medjugorje, is that uh, lecturers and of course uh, uh, workers or students have been. Uh, uh, have been victims of these uh, suicide bombings uh, carried out by women. But the report we are, we, we, are, we are getting is that there are some uh, northern parents that are actually submitting, willingly submitting their children, their, their daughters, to Boko Haram to carry out this suicide attack. Uh, how would you react to this? Yeah, we, we come back to the same issue. The, the, the is not a law. Uh, even the senior um, authorities, the civil authorities themselves, community leaders, uh, you know, religious leaders, all these people must be on the watch to ensure that such a uh, radicalization uh, will not happen. And once it happens, they should be on top of the game by knowing exactly what's going on. If you can think from within the community, then what it means is that a lot of radicalization is going on within the community that the civil authority and in fact the military have not been able to lay hands upon. What is going on? Why must people um, uh, donate their children of such heinous uh, crimes and of another sickness embedded in that community or in that area have some grievances against um, authority or against whatever? Why must they be radicalized? Therefore, you must look into that. So you need a lot of people right inside there watching to see the guys radicalized alone. The person looks at it, it is left for the community to, to you know, to account about it. But maybe that's not the issue. The issue is a collective responsibility from all segments of the society, be it university or community, be it the traditional community, religious community, and so on. We are to watch. Because how come people are radicalized and making their children and their own fundamentally wrong that is not addressed? And that is what Hmm. Now, uh, the, the explanation of the Nigerian Army and, of course, the Air Force is that the weather conditions right now 
of um, a degree of Borno state and its environs is not that favorable uh, to many of uh, their uh, operations. Uh, what would you advise that they do to actually adapt to the weather conditions and at the same time keep a vigil uh, to forestall any kind of attack by the Boko Haram side?
does not appeal to them. So what appeals to them? You, you need something else. You need something else. I'm asking you, if working within the community, except perhaps the GSS and uh, any other intelligence community, work you know, right on the ground and, and move inch by inch, looking at areas, and you do not need sophisticated people. You do not need um, the elite to do that for you. You need to entrench yourself among the farmers, among the locals, to get people there. Certainly there are people who are prepared to work within the Nigerian system. There are people who are aggrieved about what Boko Haram is doing and are prepared to end their support. But you need to work to them, you need to identify them, you need to go there. And it doesn't require the new people. It requires the local. And the incentive you can provide are simple, simple incentives of their normal livelihood. Don't forget that if you over reward them, Boko Haram will identify them. Okay. Oh, we eventually lost. Okay, we we're about to wrap up the interview anyway, uh, but we lost that. All right, uh, let's take another short break. Let's try to speak with the ASU national president, uh, Comrade Biodu Buyemi. He's one of those uh, who have the opinion that ASU will have to go on strike in solidarity with uh, the lecturers who have lost their lives in university of Medjugorje. Stay with us. You now have uh, on the line uh, Comrade uh, Biodun Oguyemi, that's the ASO National President. Uh, Comrade Oguyemi. Good morning. Yes, uh, we are looking at uh, uh, the renewed attacks uh, by the Boko Haram sect, especially as it affects the University of Medjugorje and uh, members of your association, uh, ASO. Uh, let us quickly find out from you. We need details. Uh, how many lecturers have been affected uh, by these attacks on University of Medjugorje? Uh, Thank you. 
working. Uh, so the confirmation of the discussion is about one uh, deposit to the deposit within the child base. So these are the most current uh, situations. But between that scenario and now, the campus itself has been attacked for the first time. Yes. And that is why in our release, as we release uh, on June 9th, uh, if you check two weeks with our unit trust and the nation, we actually call for uh, intervention to further prepare the campus in terms of security and guarantee the safety and the security of our members in that industry. So we've been talking about all this before it's in any Hmm. Now, Comrade uh, Now, wh when you when you talk about uh, going on solidarity strike uh, on behalf of these uh, deceased and affected uh, lecturers and members of your union, investors of the degree, have you tried to at least interface or discuss with the presidency uh, in order to look at ways you can avoid this because of uh, the resultant effect? Which will affect uh, so many other lives than those that are that were lost in this attack. Uh, let me make uh, two points clear. Uh, we didn't come out to actually call it the solidarity back. Uh, what the campaign of our solution in terms of that statement was that injury to one is injury to all. If we have our members in captivity and then to have them be built a close that cannot sit idly and watch it. And the essence of that statement was to make a passionate plea to the government at all levels, federal, states, local, to all move in and see what they can do. Now those who are built we have lost the land, there's only we can ever go. And uh, those who are doing captivity, we can save them. So we cannot be happy working when our colleagues are in captivity. It is a very, very bad signal. Uh, of course, you can't expect normal lives to continue in that university. So that is what we are saying. If we are not happy, whether our branch or that, uh, access or our branch is only one Nigeria. We cannot pretend that we don't know what is happening. And uh, when you talk about the good government, yes, I told you about our release. So if you have two page release, but it's not only on the hand, this security on the campus. The two page release we issued on two months, it has been advertised for two days. And that means we need for the federal government to remove the form they needed to do the perimeter fencing of that campus. There is, there is a need. Are you, are you, you saying know? that the investor of Medjugorje is not fenced? No, then I was, that's where I was called, called, uh, coming to. Uh, you know, there's a perimeter, when you say perimeter for site. Yes. There is one site that is not uh, completely fenced. And that makes the campus vulnerable to attack from that angle. So we have been calling on them even to last year to remove there because the Lincoln particularly has suddenly become a source target uh, for these uh, insurgents. And the engine will move to more than that. Beyond fencing, we also need to fortify the entire environment. And of course, the entire, uh, the entire notice as it were, because our members are researchers, they cannot just, they cannot just encamp themselves on the campus and, and they are totally detached from the community. So, we have always been saying that they should do what they need to do, so that as we are talking of by the group, they will not shift their attention to you, they will not be to you. Eh? Now we left it in my camera uh, crew and other part and higher institution, another part of the uh, north. So that is why we call on them that that access requires all the attention that we can get. Of course, beyond that, we've also written to them. We've written to comment that we've not to complaints and we do it before the what we think they should do. And they 
have actions to this end of time. But if our letter will go on any action, it may not be solely because of that. Let me just make that clear. When there is need to go on any action, it may not be solely because of that. But it is one of the issues that we have always raised. All right, thank you very much uh, for joining us on the show this morning. Comrade Biodo Obuemi, we appreciate you. You're welcome, thank you. All right, have a wonderful day. All right, uh, that was it. Uh, you heard him, uh, Comrade Biodo Obuemi, National President of uh, ASU, the Academic Staff Union of Universities. All right, because of our time, we'll take a breather here for the National News at 10. And after the National News, we'll come back and continue our discussion. Hopefully, we'll be able to get through to Brigadier General Sonny Usman, the Army spokesman. Stay with us. There are no two ways about it. Uh, the way forward is for us to work together and fashion out the best strategies, uh, the best solutions uh, that we can apply to solve our challenges, a myriad of them. Well, uh, chief among them is what we are discussing this morning, and that is insecurity. Uh, of course, you recall that uh, we spoke with. Uh, uh, Colonel Ademola Lawal, a retired colonel of the Nigerian Army. And of course, uh, uh, he is of the opinion that the Nigerian military intelligence must continue to gather more intelligence uh, from the people who are at the grassroots because they are the ones who know these people, they are the ones who uh, know how this element has been radicalized, and they are the ones that can actually help. Uh, the entire security apparatchik in the country to fight the insurgents. Uh, we also spoke with uh, Comrade Biodu Guemi, is the national president of ASU, as the academic staff union of universities. Uh, he's of the opinion that, uh, well, what is happening in the University of Medjugorje and Bono State at large is uh, becoming more worrisome than uh, uh, it used to be, and it should generate uh, more reactions and of course the federal government and the security agencies must pay more attention to it already he wrote out a number of those who have lost their lives talking about lecturers at that university about seven of them and of course uh, uh, more than 70 lecturers who have also resigned because uh, they are trying to protect themselves from any mishap and it's of the opinion that uh, if this is not curtailed if this doesn't stop anytime soon and then uh, ASO will have to take the bull by the horn. And what does that mean? It means uh, they will have to take a very, very bold and important step in calling out members across this, the country. All right, we've been trying for to get in touch with Brigadier General Sonny Usman, who is the spokesman of the Nigerian Army. Uh, I guess he's caught up uh, uh, some, somewhere, uh, somehow. We spoke with him earlier this morning before the show, but I think uh, during the network challenges that we had, he got caught up with something else. All right, uh, we won't uh, stop the show because of that. We will just go straight ahead into thinking your calls, your contributions, and of course your messages. Good morning. It's a very short comment. Let's leave intelligence aside. Uh, Let's leave what is When Boko Haram started it out, people thought it was a Muslim issue. Muslims want to rule Nigeria, Muslim, one Islamic state, and all that. And some people, foolish people, know they saw about the crime war. Yeah. If we had come out at that time and said this is personality, it has nothing to do with really religion, then that will not be where we are. And people were so happy. There is only Christians that are killing them. Let's leave them aside. Now they are finished killing Christians. Perhaps, which is not to their demand in because they are criminals. They have now gone to University of Medigree. University of Medigree never spoke out when that thing was happening. I'm sure they were so happy that they want to clean the case. Now they are buried in front of it. This is what normally happens. When we see evil anywhere, whether it's in your religion or not, our man can speak against it. Because when they finish with those people, they come to you. Look at what has happened in Africa. Drug barons, and they knew that those people are drug barons, but 
they were building churches for them. They were so happy. That people are not that. Now they are keep building the churches and they are talking, they can't talk because they come criminality. My message this morning is that wherever you see criminality, seek that religion. We are not some more human beings. Religion is second to you. What you are not to say, either a Christian or a Muslim. Your religion is second to you. First of all, you have humanity. Let us say no to criminality, no matter where it comes from. Whether from Christianity, from this thing, come on and see the it. Because when they finish with the other person, it's you. And this is what is happening in the case of delivery. And it will happen elsewhere in this country if we don't stand up against criminality, irrespective of where it comes from. Thank you very much. Um, all right, thank you. Good morning. 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 Allah. The renewed ones as we are discussing in my group. This is one area that I see the president has said. When he came on power, he, he, into power, one of the points in his inaugural address was that he would try to lead his place to my people. And he personally would assume the command of that place. This was based on as the strategy, as a former governor of the North, that compiled them for whom Adama was doing, among others. And the world really paid off the old point, who all our capacity was needed to have to do them. Now the effort of the vice president is commending when all the needed to relocate to Bonu again. Then of this effort this time around, we put a stop to this new or I We would have wiped them out. We would have wiped them out. But that's not why we see much. We will go to bring him back. But in the country in Nigeria, let us not give me this to go. What is my idea? That's a group of one million boys. God bless you too. Thank you very much. All right, uh, this message uh, came in via the short code. Honestly, I'm at a fix on Boko Haram insurgency. Today, their commanders are captured. Tomorrow, they are released in exchange for their victims. Some are voluntarily released on flimsy excuses. A soldier captured an insurgent and set him ablaze. The soldier was caught martialed and sentenced to death. Sponsors of the insurgency are there and left untouched. Which way, Nigeria? For La Kiemi sent in that one. More messages are actually coming in. This, uh, this one says, All of us should uh, be whistleblowers against criminals in the society. Uh, Sonny sending in that message. All right, let's go to our Facebook page. Uh, this one from Adewale Shubwale says, 
If it is true that some parents uh, up north are uh, actually giving up their children to be used as cannon fodders by Boko Haram, then the federal government needs to re-strategize. So they say that the people still sympathize with what Boko Haram stands for or they lack enlightenment. Government should be up and doing as the war is expensive in terms of men and resources. Abimbala Muhyiddin Taibo says that the issue of terrorism is a global problem and cannot be totally stopped as a win war against a particular sect, another sect will spring up. That's why the security must not be relaxed at any point in time. There are lots of things to be done to surmount Boko Haram menace in Borno, looking at some factors such as geographical location of the Northeast, the social cultural lifestyle, radicalization and political issues, even in the military. To keep the Northeast peaceful, the slogan, no retreat, no surrender, should remain. Once an area is east liberated, the post counter terrorism operations must continue. Government should provide necessary surveillance gadgets, arms, and ammunition. Armored personal carrier vehicles for security agencies that will be deployed to the liberated area. So, also, government should woo the local people to work as an informant to the security agencies and provide them with remuneration. Abimbala Muidin Taiwo says, moreover, Boko Haram is purely terrorism and not religion. They are just hiding under the disguise of Islam. They attack everyone, including Muslims. All right, that's the concluding part of uh, Abimbala Muidin Taiwo's submission. Yeah, you are Benson Abin, I'm calling from Yako. Thank you for calling. And uh, I would like to, uh, just to add what he has said, that uh, whatever you throw, see there is this other thing, whatever you throw, you want to read. Fortunately, I worked in my lifetime, several, uh, several, up to just airports in Nigeria, including the Great International Airport. I lived here, I lived in um, the Korea, I worked there. And indeed, I cannot say categorically, just like uh, Dr. Hukum said, that this thing was caused by the deadly in that region. And in this University of Madhuri, all the, uh, the lecturers, 80% of the lecturers there, the uh, student union and the Muslim student union, particularly, who are highly one that really uh, mentor the radical people that we are seeing now. This is started during the Bangida and was very well funded. That regime, including the state government of that region. And unfortunately, we are talking of an area that is larger than all states combined in the southwest. So when you like, what you really need to the peace, there is no way this terrorism will not come back. Because the government really did not have the means of giving prosecution or dealing with those that willingly surrender. And these are the same people that go back to society to go and and they are making bombs and getting children to come and throw the bombs. So it's a long war to prove that we are going to fight. But more important than anything else, the society they are concerned them, and there is no way we can defeat them because they are like, they have the sentiment of having people around them. They are fighting a jihadist war. And this is not just yet, I think, in 1970. So it's a long way to go. You cannot change that mentality. And these lecturers that are resigning now, see, they are hard work, but yes, but we have friends here. For the past 20 years or 30 years, you cannot become a student union leader. You are so particular. You cannot be, become a lecturer. They cannot even employ you to not to talk of becoming the PC of that university. And whatever the university authority wants to do, it is taken by the student, student, student union in particular, who also functions as the um, Government, uh, student government, uh, 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 government of the university. So it's a big problem, bigger than this. But unfortunately, the, the thing they were fighting, non religion and non Muslim, there are no non religion beginning or non Muslim to fight, they now have to face the university and the uh -huh. elite of that society. And that is what, why the university of the United has become the top standard for them. And they continue to fight, uh, fight them because. We have a large number of people in the university who are member of Boko Haram and who have existed for more than 30 years in that state. And that is the unfortunate thing that is discussing us a lot. All right, thank you. The recommendation is that we either allow the, the North East to move upon 
Thank you, thank you. There's no more northern president can fight. Okay, no core northern president, sorry, can fight Boko Haram and Fulani headsmen successfully. Boko Haram has become an ideology. All right, that's uh, an opinion of Honorable Jamio Keshiro. It is on that note that we we'll call it a day this morning on uh, Citizens for Our Daybreak Show. We thank you for joining us. We appreciate every one of you for your contributions, the calls, the messages, the tweets, and of course the comments on our Facebook page. Join us again tomorrow for another fresh edition of the show. It starts early at 7 a.m. I am Toby Joseph. God bless you. God bless Nigeria. And God bless Roxy FM. And I am Hakimario Ooh, uh, Kenneth.